So I was just fascinated to share what I saw going on in Romans chapter 1 verses 1 to 6. Uh, first of all, it's worth having a brief overview of what we know to be the letter from Paul to the church in Rome. And what we see in that letter is that Paul is writing to a church divided. There's particular tensions between the Jews and the Gentiles. But despite that the church is well known around the known world of that time, especially to Paul, the church is known for its faith. And as it's known for its faith, it's why it's attracted Paul in particular to address the tensions that are going on between the Jews and the Gentiles. And this letter is an opportunity to address those differences, all based on the centrality and the outline of the gospel that Paul goes on to give throughout, especially the first half, maybe the first three quarters of this letter and how that gospel relates both to the law as far as the Jews are concerned and to the whole of humanity as far as faith in Christ Jesus is concerned. As Paul outlines those things, Paul talks about the problem that God has with man and how that problem is resolved by faith in Jesus Christ and all that he's done and how as a result of that those who have that faith in Jesus Christ get to enjoy and experience life in the Holy Spirit. Not only that, Paul goes on to address how the Israelites, that, that would be of good news to the Jews, are particularly still as an essential part of God's plan. And overall, Paul goes into specifics about the practicalities of how the gospel affects how we relate to him, how we relate to each other, and how we relate to those outside because of Jesus Christ. So that's a brief overview of Paul's letter to the church in Rome. I'm sure there are more detailed summaries that you can find and discover, but I I only give that as the outline, as a context to explore carefully this particular first section of Paul's letter to the church in Rome. So in verses 1 to 6 of chapter 1, it says as follows, Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be the son of God in power according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection from the dead. Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations, including you, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. Now, that's pretty packed. And remember, this is just the greeting. It's just the opening part of what Paul is about to embark on. But I found it fascinating to see particularly what Paul says about himself, namely how he's a servant of Jesus Christ, how he knows that he's called to be an apostle and how that calling um, requires him to bring about the obedience of the faith. It's something I want to get back to, but it's just fascinating in that section that Paul has a good idea of what he is called to be because of who God is. Not only that, but Paul is establishing, even at these very early stages, the connection that Jesus has to the scriptures, to the old scriptures, what we refer to as the Old Testament, and how Jesus fulfills that. First of all, in terms of him being descended from David according to the flesh, but then Paul gets to hail the nature of Christ especially as expressed in the resurrection. So we see how he's referred to as the son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness by his resurrection. So these gospel truths about who Jesus is revealed as being as a fulfillment of scripture from all the way back then, and then how it's been revealed in the recent times as as far as Paul is concerned, and the importance of that, even at this greeting stage. And then we have that section that I wanted us to have a look at again where Paul says that he's looking to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations and when you hear that phrase that should remind you of Jesus's great commission which is to make disciples of all the nations teaching them to observe everything that Jesus has commanded and so that's the apostleship that Paul has received to uh, stimulate in believers that they should know what it is that they're doing when it comes to the faith in Christ and how crucial that is to learn if we know what we're on about when it comes to growing and knowing who Jesus is. Paul can't get enough of the power of the name of Jesus and the mentions of him even in this opening greeting, how everything is centered around who Jesus Christ is. 
And so it was just fascinating to see how rich and vibrant just this greeting is to the saints in Rome. And it's crucial to appreciate again that this greeting really is just for us. It's not just for me. It's not an individual greeting. It's not for me to learn something on my own, but it's something that we can learn from together as a community of Christ. So it's fascinating looking in that word and what's going on in there in that place. But here are some key takeaways that I'm keen for us to uh, consider when we look at this section of scripture. First of all, to celebrate the centrality of Jesus Christ in all of life. Then to cherish how Jesus defines our calling. So just as Paul knew who he was and what he was called to do because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So in the same way, we who have a relationship with God should know what we're called to be and cherish that calling and consider how that calling calls for the development of character. So the whole thing about discipleship, the whole thing about bringing about obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all the nations relating to that great commission isn't just about making a decision, it's about making character development that becomes more like Christ. So it's to celebrate the centrality of Jesus, to cherish how Jesus defines our calling, consider how that calling looks at developing our character, and then as Paul is doing here, how we can likewise be caught up to carry across Christ in our connection with others. It's just fascinating to see these things in action, looking at the scripture in particular. So let me pray for us all in the light of what I've just shared at this time. Father, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who has made it possible for us to have a right relationship with you by faith. Help us by your Holy Spirit to know our calling in you and celebrate and cherish your gospel by sharing it with others so that they too may believe and enjoy eternal life with you. For your great namesake, we pray. Amen.